something years and you know we've um, done a lot of um uh, really good planning together and you know executing of of um, dietary programs and so on and diana is just really um, amazing um but um maybe we'll start by um maybe could you give us a oops could you give us a little background um on who is diana bruin you know where did you come from how did you get into being a dietitian what was your path to you know being where you are right now Absolutely. Hello, everybody. I'm excited to be here. So my path to being here right now is a winding road, uh, one that I had a lot of good fun on. But I've been a dietitian for over 15 years. And I worked in dialysis for quite a few years and just decided that I could do so much more uh, helping the kidney world before people get to dialysis. And so I went into private practice working uh, with folks who had kidney disease. And then from there, I got introduced to Dr. Wimes and a lot of his groundbreaking research and was invited to come in to say, hey, let's take all this nutrition knowledge you have related to the kidneys. Let's take this amazing research we have related to um, PKD and pathways that involve um, how nutrition can affect PKD and see if we can put them together. Will it actually work? And so I started digging into that and putting together and absolutely fell in love with working within the PKD uh, community. And for those of you who don't know what PKD is, it's polycystic kidney disease. So it is a kidney disease. And part of working with Dr. Wimes um, was developing plant-focused ketogenic therapy specifically for the kidneys. Um, and so it's been a few years now, and that's, that's kind of what brought me here. And some fun facts about me is that I love science. However, my superpower is being able to take complicated science, make sense of it, and help you take action to improve your kidney health so excellent yeah <clears throat> and um you know i've seen you in action um so you know leading the renew program um and but so be, let's um so i'm wondering so people might wonder okay what does a dietitian do um and you mentioned you know you used to be in dialysis um which is i think very 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 different <laughs> from what you're doing right now um so that's kind of um you know you're probably on the ground in a dialysis clinic all day long helping people out um or what do you do there in, in a di uh, as a dialysis um, as a dialysis dietitian, dietitian. Mm -hmm. um so as a diet dialysis dietitian you are responsible for you get I had 125 people generally. Mm. Um, I did both hemodialysis and PD. And you are responsible for getting all their labs and helping to educate them on their labs, um, educate them on the medications, also to help them make dietary changes if they, to help better their labs, also if they want to try to get a transplant. You also are involved in, you lead their bone health. So you're in charge of their bone health. And sometimes you end up being the party crew too. So <laughs> yeah. um, whenever there's a holiday, you, um, right. you get to, to be in charge of that, but it's very different. It's on, it's on the hmm. tail end of um, right. someone yeah. who has kidney disease. It's still okay. very, very incredibly valuable, but it was not the right fit for me. I'm right. a proactive yeah. girl. I'm a, what can right. we do to make sure mm. no one gets there? Exactly right. Okay. And that's what you did. Um, so you have um, <clears throat> essentially a private practice and it's um, remote, right? Is that right? So currently you also see patients or clients one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, remotely. Um, how, how does that work yeah. out? So one of the mm. silver linings of this great COVID era is that uh, we've moved virtual and with uh, dietitians, it has opened up access to anyone in the kidney world to work with a dietitian who is specialized in kidney health. 
because it does matter. The kidneys, I mean, excuse me, but the kidneys are badass. <laughs> but at the same time, they can be pretty complicated. And so I do, I work 100% virtually. I work with clients all over the United States. I also um, created was the lead creator for the Renew program um, with plant-focused ketogenic therapy. And that was an amazing experience running a group program. Uh, I also do more um, web-based learning for folks. So folks can come in and learn about specific things that are relevant for them to do with their diet and lifestyle to help protect their kidneys. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So anyone, especially with PKD, which is kind of your specialty, of course, anyone with PKD and anywhere in the US could send you a message and say, hey, Diana, I would like to work with you one on one. Um, and, you know, of course, you have a fee for that and so on. And, and you know, you put them on a, um, a schedule and you meet uh, remotely <clears throat> um, by a Zoom or something like this. Um, and you go over there blood panels and medical history and, um, you know, starting uh, to work with them. So that's um, maybe Whoa. kind of... The, um, that's my Whoa. office, John Riley. <laughs> Riley, Riley. Say hello to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Riley. Um, good. So that's sort of the, you know, almost like the best of the best way of working with a dietitian and kind of one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then, um, but another level is um, really in a group setting. And that's what the Renew program is all about that we've you know, mentioned, um, which is um, essentially a class setting. You know, there's usually a group of say 20 people or so that all start at the same time. They go through the program for three months um, through it. Um, and um, th there's some pluses and minuses. Yeah, right. Mm, um, I can hear you, Thomas. I'm going to let the dog out. We're live. This okay. is how it rolls. <laughs> yeah, all right. Cool. All right. So maybe I'll just <clears throat> uh, mention the pluses and minuses of um, working one on one with a dietitian versus oh, in a group. In a group. Just groups. to put it out there. Okay, there go for are it. Yeah. dietitians that specialize in the kidneys. And so if you are working on your kidney health and your overall health, I would highly recommend working with one of them. Um, you can, there are dietitians that accept insurance, insurance does cover it. So if there is a, um, a barrier there, absolutely there is help for you. Um, there's also dietitians that work virtually. And so like myself, and what I would say is if you're thinking about working with a dietitian, the National Kidney Foundation does have a list of dietitians so you can find one in your area and they're kidney specific. There's, if you are someone with PKD, there's very few who specialize in PKD. I think I might actually be the only dietitian that's only with PKD, but there's a lot that I know that are also um, very well educated in how to slow progression of PKD. Um, so you can start there. But another thing is if you are someone who really enjoys a community, enjoys connecting with other people, learning from them, I would absolutely recommend a group program. And especially if you're looking to do ketogenic therapy, uh, the Renew program, the community is so powerful. A lot of people coming in have never met another person who has PKD. Mm -hmm. And what I hear over and over again is, oh, that's normal. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, you're experiencing that too. And just the, you know, just when people are even talking about, well, I'm afraid to go get my labs done, or do you have this pain, or have you tried this crazy supplement that I've heard online? Um, that that community support is, if that is something that would benefit you, I would highly recommend doing a group program. So hmm. there are so many options, and people can absolutely reach out to me. They can go on to the National Kidney Foundation. Um, the PKD Foundations have centers of excellence. I don't know if it directly connects you with dietitians, um, but there's power in nutrition. Mm -hmm. yep, and totally it's, ne it's so much power in nutrition and it's never too early to start putting good habits in place. Mm -hmm. 
Good, excellent. And pretty much also never really too late, right? Even if someone is like very near end stage kidney disease, they can oftentimes, you know, stabilize their, <clears throat> their progression quite a bit. Uh, and you know, that might give some time to, um, <clears throat> you know, line up a transplant and things like that. So never too early, uh, never too late. Like, no, not at all. I've worked with quite a few people who have had, mm. um, you know, a GFR, a kidney function of under 10. And they mm. have stayed off of dialysis for one year, two years. I call it the bridge to transplant. And right. so every person's goal is different on what they want to do with their right. diet. And you're you're hundred percent right, Thomas. It's never too early. It's never too late to see what are my options and opportunities. Good, excellent. And um, so, of course, you know, the group program isn't really geared towards people um, with very low kidney function, right? So there's a bit of a cutoff um, that uh, of um, of GFR uh, where people are admitted um, or can be admitted to the program, right? Is that 25 yeah. GFR? So EGFR? right now, the Renew program, which is the only one of its kind, um, the cutoff is 25 for GFR. And the reason for that is in all of our experience, in all of the science, in everything related to the kidneys, usually lower than that, there are other things that need to be one-on-one -on -one addressed. Mm -hmm. So there's, it needs a higher level of attention. You need to look at, you know, anemia, you need to look at bone health, and it usually requires a higher level of attention. Right. And so that's why the cutoff was set at that. We've actually mm -hmm. talked about me leading a smaller cohort of folks in the Renew program that have a lower mm -hmm. GFR. Mm -hmm. um, so doing it within the new program for the community, but having one-on-one -on -one very close work with me. So that's definitely something that mm -hmm. we've talked about. Um, but if you have a GFR, um, that is less than 25, I would absolutely recommend reaching out to talk with, um, either a dietitian from the Kidney Nutrition Institute, because they also do a lot of work with PKD. Um, it was with, it was through them that I helped develop the uh, Renew program. And reach out, you can actually work with a dietitian um, to see if it's the right fit for you. A free phone call. A lot of times it's called a discovery call. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you can reach out to me too, because you want to see if it's a good fit. Um, talk about kind of like what your goals are. So that is the option I would recommend for someone who has a uh, mm -hmm. kidney function that is a little bit lower. Good. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. So let's talk about what we even talk about. Um, diet and lifestyle changes. What kind of changes? Um, so the Renew program <clears throat> essentially is a um, plant-focused, ketogenic, kidney-safe, low oxalate, low phosphate, um, protein-controlled um, <laughs> diet and lifestyle program, you know. <laughs> so, Can you imagine um, that Scrabble, how many points you'd get in Scrabble for that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Um, so there's a lot to unpack there. So I wonder if you could summarize roughly what, what that all means. What, what does it mean? Okay. So hmm. I'll, start, I'll start from the top. Mm -hmm. Plant-focused keto. When when you hear that, you think, oh, vegan, vegetarian, but it's not. The focus is mm -hmm. on plants. And it includes, so it is ketogenic therapy. So that means it is lower carbohydrate and higher fat, but you're building your plate out of good plants. So that's the vegetables, that's plant-based proteins, uh, that's even some fruit. You know, that's that good fat, but it doesn't mean that there's no animal, doesn't mean there's no dairy, there's eggs included, there's even, you know, some people have, it's very individual, so some people have the ability to have a little bit of chicken and different kinds of protein, there's nuts, there's seeds, and so plant-focused really is, you want the bulk of what you're eating being plant, mm -hmm. and so doing ketogenic therapy, a lot of people think, you know, well, that's just, you know, a bacon diet, bacon and butter. Hmm. And that's what I call meat keto And mm -hmm. that's not good for your kidneys. And so therapeutic ketogenic therapy, that's kind of a tongue twister, 
doing it in a way that considers the kidneys. So it's very nutrient dense, very well balanced, very high in fiber and good fats. But at the same time, you don't, you're not adding in all of those stressors that we know can cause further decline of the kidneys. And the rest of all of that stuff that you said, oxalate managed, all of that, those are things that are kidney stressors, especially for PKD. So it's not mm. high protein. That doesn't mean no protein. It mm. is oxalate managed. And if you've never heard the word oxalate, that is um, a piece of plants. It's a part of plants that we don't need as humans. I like to say you eat it, you excrete it, you get rid of it. Um, but if you eat too much of it and you don't eat in the right way, you can get kidney stones. You can stress out your PKD and stimulate, you know, what I say is angry cyst. Um, and so there's these, it's balancing factor and uh, that's what Renew teaches you. And it's a very, teaches you and shows you how to do. And what I love about it is it's all about kidney health. So there's no focus. The focus is not on disease. It's about what you can do. So it's ketogenic, meaning that you're going to be running off of fat and not, you're going to be running out of fat and ketones, not carbohydrates and blood sugar. And you're also going to be managing some other aspects that we know can make PKD worse or CKD worse. Did I get them all, Thomas? <laughs> Yeah, very excellent. <clears throat> Perfect. Yes. And really, so the point of putting together the Renew program is kind of like a formal program is to give um, people all the help and tools um, they might need to succeed. Um, because, you know, it's really, so if you just randomly Google around the internet um, and try to figure out how to do all this on your own, you see a flood of information and it's mostly contradictory. You know, one website says this, the other one says the opposite. You know, this is good for you. No, no, this is bad for you. Um, so it's, um, you know, it, it had been um, kind of a chaos um, for people trying to make sense of everything. Uh, and that was kind of one of the reasons to um, put this together. <clears throat> um, but in theory, you know, somebody um, can, could, do it all on, on their own, right? So um, if they just know how to figure it all out. Um, so let's um, let's assume, you know, somebody out there wants to know, <laughs> you know, how to even start a ketogenic diet, right? So how do you go about it? Um, and um, um, there's probably many different ways, but so you could do cold turkey, you know, you start off a long fasting period, you know, let's say you do a 36 hour fast or something like this just to get into ketosis um you could do um a slow weaning in if you will you know you just lower your carbs slowly and, and raise your fats you know every day a little bit you could do a time restricted eating where you just keep uh, narrowing your window a little bit more uh, day by day what do you recommend what what's the best way to do it so lots of options right so I don't want to assume that everybody who's joining us today un understands what ketogenic diet is or what, what ketosis is. Let's not assume. Um, so there's probably some people here that are just, you know, they'd like to know what it is. So in very simple explanation, what we feed our body is used as energy. And when you are eating um, standard American diet or how a lot of people eat, you are eating carbohydrates and protein and fat but your main source of energy is carbohydrates. And in the body, all carbohydrates, whether they are Skittles or whether it's brown rice, those are all carbs, sugar, that gets broken down into sugar. And that's the body's main source of energy. Now, what ketogenic therapy is, is that you reduce. So the amount of carbohydrates that someone's eating, you reduce it to a certain level. So you take away that source of energy. And for each person, it's different. So if you've heard out there, oh, 20 grams of carbs, 50 grams of carbs, that ah, rubbish. For every single person, it is different what you need. And so when you are going into ketosis, which is when you have ketones and ketones are little energy nuggets, 
um, that your body uses. So when you reduce the carbohydrates to a level that your body doesn't have that energy source, it naturally goes looking for another energy source. And this is a very natural process. And that is when you reduce the carbs and you switch over to running on fat. So your body takes the fat that you're eating, you know, like a really good extra virgin olive oil or that avocado or coconut milk takes that fat and converts it into ketones, which is an energy source. Or sometimes some of us have some extra padding, <laughs> some, some fleshy bits. We can use parts of that that we don't need and makes ketones. And so that's what ketosis is. Ketosis is when you have ketones and ketogenic therapy is when you have lower carbohydrates and you switch over and you're running on ketones from that. So that's basically just a very basic overview. Um, now you gave some really good ways to jumpstart ketogenic therapy. And when you're doing anything for the kidneys and when you're doing anything to improve the kidneys, you always want to know what is the main cause of kidney damage or injury or stress. And the two top causes in the world are high poorly controlled high blood pressure and bat poorly controlled diabetes. And you might folks out there might be surprised to hear this, but those are the two areas that are the most researched within the kidney world for ketogenic therapy. Of course, now PKD, <laughs> thanks to you, Thomas. Um, but I have found in my years of doing this, that the best way to start a ketogenic diet is to plan. And it's I know plan. that sounds is okay. to plan. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to break that down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you want to plan. And when I say plan, you want to first know what is your why? So are you trying to better control diabetes? Are you trying to lose some weight? Are you hoping to improve your blood pressure? Are you, you know, what is your why? And with your why, you want to know what your goals are because you're going to want to revisit that. You're going to want to know your why. And then the second thing that you're going to want to plan is how, how do I do this? How does mm -hmm. it look for me? How is it safe? That is where I'm going to go back to earlier in our conversation and say, absolutely. It is invaluable to work with a professional that can help you set all of this up in a safe way for your kidneys. So that's my plug there. But mm -hmm. here's the first thing you want to do. Go into what you eat regularly or what you have in the cabinets and look at what has added sugar. Start there. Mm -hmm. So week one, start identifying everything that has added sugar. Cut it out because added sugar is carbs. That's the, I mean, just doing that alone, so much benefit. While you're doing that, learn a little bit more about what ketogenic therapy is so you can understand it. And then the next step would be, and this is more of a gradual, but I have found super success with gradual. The next step would be to start cutting out your starchy foods. I'm talking your breads, your pastas, all of that packaged crap. And mm -hmm. so you want to start cutting this out. But the key is, what do you replace it with? And that, again, is part of the planning. There's some great lists out there about here's all the foods you can eat. Here's, here's, you know, really good stuff that you can eat. And so while you're cutting out the stuff that is higher in carbs, start stocking your pantry and replacing it with the stuff you can eat. You know, the good nuts, the good nut butters. Um, I was, you really don't want to buy all the, the products, the keto products, because that still is super heavily processed. Um, but get an idea of the plan. Mm -hmm. And then from there, if you want to jump right in, create, create a meal plan, you know, say, this is what it looks like for my breakfast. Maybe I'm having a smoothie. This is what it looks like for my lunch. This is what it looks like for my dinner. Uh, you don't even have to do all three at once. You can start one week. I'm going to do breakfast. The next week I'm going to do all my lunches. 
Um, so you can gradually build up to it. And I have found that to be super successful. But if you hmm. don't know going in, if you haven't removed all that temptation and replaced it with your options and come up with a few simple meal ideas, it's going to be really hard. And I think that is the best way, but also to figure out how you're going to track or know if you are hitting your goals. Cause we're talking about a therapy here. Um, so I found that is the best way to start. <laughs> Cause All there's right. a learning curve. Good. Right. So you heard it here. <clears throat> um, Diana's preferred approach is sort of the gradual approach. Um, as opposed to cold turkey, you know, don't eat anything and <laughs> wait until the ketones come up. Um, yes, no, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's there are probably some people out there, maybe like me, <laughs> um, I wouldn't sit down there and do meal planning and so on, um, just because I wouldn't have the patience and the time and so on. For me, um, and I actually went through the Renew program as a you know guinea pig, one of the guinea pigs. Um, and I found it really helpful to have some concrete materials, right? So you have this wonderful shopping list um, that has, you know, all the categories broken down. Here's the um, the vegetables, here's the whatever the meats and so on um, that that are, you know, allowed, if you will, or that are re recommended. Um, so what I personally did is, you know, I went through my pantry and I threw everything in the trash um, that is not on that list, <laughs> which it was pretty much everything. Um, so you end up with an empty fridge and an empty pantry, and then you go shopping and you buy only things that are kind of low carb um, to begin with. And um, for me personally, rather than a meal plan, um, I just take any of these ingredients I think might fit together and I throw them in a pan and I heat them up and I eat it. <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily <laughs> taste good, but um, <laughs> um, at least I... Yeah. <laughs> um, I, you, you get into I, I remember that from the, the few years <laughs> ago that you're like, I'm just going to put it all in the pan and see what comes up with. But, you yeah. know, it is so valuable to have from someone that you trust a list of start right. here. You know, what yes. I love to do is when I'm when I'm meeting with people, we do a little education on, you know, if you if you understand what ketogenic therapy is and why you're doing mm -hmm. it. We do a little education on that, what to expect. And at the end of our first session, I'll give them these tools to look over these lists of look mm -hmm. at all the foods you can eat. And I tell them, go through and highlight your favorites. Right. And, Good. and then if there's something that's not on there, ask me why, or let's figure out why. And then mm -hmm. I give them a couple recipes to try. And Thomas, I'm just going to call you the stir fry man because it sounds like <laughs> all your meals are stir fry. It's amazing. <laughs> and that's a great place to start. You know, mm. some good coconut oil, some good aromatics. So you're smelling the garlic mm. and some stir fry, you know, a little bit of uh, maybe some cilantro on top, some roasted pumpkin seeds. I don't know. I'm just coming up with this. But mm. so they try out a few of the recipes and they get really excited. Cause they're like, Oh, this tastes really good. And wow, my family might eat this too. And, and so there's that moment of, I can do this and I've got this whole list of foods that are really good. And yeah, a lot of people do it kind of like you say, like, Oh, and we, we change other recipes and change it and doing as you're learning is pretty powerful. And you can go to any website and like go to Pinterest and Google, keto or vegetarian keto or go look at meat free keto's website there are so many options out there and if you know what you like you can change things around a little bit and one list is so powerful hmm. never underestimate never underestimate a good list and it took us about mm -hmm. three months the list you're talking about is took us about three months to put together mm -hmm. and i literally had post-its all over my office because I was like cross-referencing stuff and figuring out. And so, yeah, you'd be amazed yeah, no. at what you can have, what's available to mm -hmm. you on right. plant-focused keto. I agree. <clears throat> yeah, it's an awesome list. Um, so if anyone is watching live right now <clears throat> um, and you have a question um, about you know, what we are roughly talking about, um, 
put a um, comment in there um, and we'll try to see what questions come up. And then instead of just chit-chatting, um, we'll, we will start answering some questions and we'll, um, if some come up. But let me first ask you a couple follow-ups. Um, so let's say somebody for the, okay, so the typical American, let's say, <clears throat> but would have pretty much never been in ketosis, right? Because they would have eaten a very high carb diet all their life and um, you know they have snacks and they're never have a break from it um, so their bodies are not really um, used to burning fat and burning ketones um, and um, there's actually some you know scientific reasons why um, it takes a while um, you know because certain genes need to get upregulated um, over time before um, somebody can become metabolically flexible again. That's kind of the, the term of art here, metabolic uh, flexibility, where someone can essentially switch between burning carbs and burning fat, you know, go back and forth like our um, ancestors back then, back then did, you know, when we were hunter-gatherers. So how um, are there some tricks um, you can do to help um, people to become metabolically flexible um, and overcome things like the keto flu symptoms, right? So our hunter-gatherer ancestors wouldn't have been in keto flu all the time, right? So that wasn't a thing back then. <laughs> so what what do you do to prevent all that? Okay, Thomas, there's like five different questions in okay, there. So <laughs> let me see if I can wrap my head around a good order for these. Okay, so you mentioned keto flu, you mentioned metabolically flexible, <laughs> you mentioned all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna walk it back a sec here. If you guys have heard of something called the keto flu, it is something that can happen when you are first lowering your carbohydrates and transitioning into ketosis. However, it doesn't have to happen. It's 100% preventable. Um, and so here's what it is. When we, the standard American diet and a lot of diets are very high in carbohydrates and carbohydrates, um, get stored in our body as fat. They get stored in our bodies, lots of stuff. But when you cut out the carbs, your body does not need something called insulin as much to store that blood glucose, but also carbs, they're waterlogged. So when you cut the carbs, you essentially start flushing tons of fluid. Mm -hmm. That's why you'll hear people in the first week of keto going, oh my goodness, I lost like five, I lost like 20 pounds. It's fluid. And that is part of the transition. However, when you are, you know, basically peeing a lot, getting rid of all this fluid, you're also getting rid of electrolytes. And that is what causes the keto flu. So you could be a little bit dehydrated because you're peeing a lot. And then with that, you're, you have, you're peeing out sodium, you're peeing out potassium and other electrolytes. So what you do is you make sure you are hydrated appropriately and that you have enough electrolytes. And I have found that the one that is, especially in the PKD world and in the kidney keto world, that is the biggest cause of keto flu and feeling kind of crappy is sodium. Hmm. You actually have to intentionally have some electrolytes. I tell people have an avocado, put a little bit of salt on it. There are some great recipes out there for electrolyte drinks, but that's all it is dehydrated. And you have gotten rid of a bunch of electrolytes. So hundred percent avoidable. Mm -hmm. And if, so when you mentioned, um, being metabolically stable, so if you've been following a ketogenic diet for you can, it could be four weeks, it could be six weeks, eight weeks, but your body gets really good at running in ketosis. It's like, Hey, I got this. You've trained your body to be really good at it. And that is when someone is essentially called fat adapted or metabolically stable, meaning my body's going to look for fat to fat first. And when you are fat adapted, it's not as you have, um, let me see how to phrase this. You have some flexibility because you've trained your body. It's kind of like, trying to run a mile when you haven't run a mile. That's first starting ketosis. 
it can be a little bit rough. But say you train every day, that is, and then you can just go out and run that mile. It's like a muscle memory. That's being fat adapted and or metabolic state. There's so many terms out there. Now you can figure out why it starts to get confusing. But in that state, you're able to tolerate, like if you go a little bit higher on your carb intake one day, it's a Friday night. You might have had a little bit more carbs. Um, the next day, it's about continuing with your plan and your body will go right back into being in ketosis as soon as you go back to it. So that's a pretty simple explanation of being fat adapted or metabolically flexible and not, you know, your body can shift a little bit um, of flexibility, which is what we want. And no, you will not get the keto flu every time. In fact, you never really have to get the keto flu. 100% preventable. Good. Mm, okay. Excellent. And the, the new program also uses keto citra, and um, you know which comes with electrolytes. Um, plus, it comes with um, the ketone beta hydroxybutyrate. We don't have to go into what, what that all is, mm -hmm. but um, I think um, that uh, actually also helps um, to uh, with the transition into ketosis because the the BHB itself, uh, this ketone is actually what signals to the body, hey, um, there's ketones around, start to change um, um, the way your mitochondria work so that you can deal with them. Um, so you kind of need that um, as a little jump start, or it can be helpful uh, as a jump start, um, even to before starting the actual ketogenic diet, you know, to first start with keto citra to give your body a little bit of a, um, you know, head start there. Okay. Oh, no, absolutely. When we did the first beta round of uh, Renew, and I think I saw, I think I saw one or people, two people in the chat that were in that beta round. If you were in the first Renew, drop something in the chat, say hello. I love that group. But we actually pushed it back a couple weeks. So we could, it was when Keto Citra first came. So we could have people start Keto Citra earlier so that you had those electrolytes. So you're, you, you're adding that. So much less chance that you're going to be um, experiencing any keto flow, but also the BHB too. Because hmm. with the Renew program, we we don't ease people in. Uh, we, we get you, you have a couple weeks to prep, get ready, try some recipes, you know, shift your mindset. And then on day one, you jump right into it. So Keto Citra um, absolutely helps with that transition. Hmm. So Excellent. Yeah. Let's start looking at some um, comments. I wish I had the power to pick them. <clears throat> um, all right. Nicole T is um, <clears throat> saying question for your guests. Um, what's the top five sources of protein for plant-based keto for PKD? Hmm. Top oh, five sources good question, of protein. Right? What would you say? So it sometimes it depends on what stage of keto ketogenic therapy you're in. It's a little bit stricter when you're for in that first part where you're training. Um, and so in that phase, a lot of the proteins that we use, we use eggs. Eggs are mm -hmm. great. Um, we also use one. a little mm -hmm. bit of tuna fish. You might be surprised to hear that because it's not mm -hmm. just about what it doesn't have. It's it's not just right. about, oh, it has lower carbs or it doesn't have this. It's also about what you're adding in that's beneficial. Mm -hmm. We also use some Greek yogurt. Uh, we use nuts and seeds. You would be incredibly surprised at how much good protein it is. We use nut butters um, and mm -hmm. also some of the plants, some of the straight plants we have, have protein. We also use cheese. I know that is Everyone's like, oh my goodness, the sodium, but you have to actually have some sodium in your diet. So mm -hmm. we've got some nice cheeses um, in there too. And so these are some of the, the really easy ways. Of course, we do use um, some tofu for people that like to eat it. And so these are just some examples of some of the proteins we use. And once you're fat adapted, you can actually add in some other sources. We, we added in some chickpeas and some other things and still maintained low level ketosis and so there's a huge variety good excellent what kind of nut butters um are your favorites for this oh well my ultimate favorite is um sun butter which is sunflower seed butter um mm -hmm. it's delicious oh talk about really good in a stir fry thomas 
-hmm. You should add that to your stir fry. It's delicious. I do I have love it in the fridge. Yep. Yeah, I sun butter is delicious. You can actually make it. Um, it mm. almost has a little bit of a sweet flavor to it. Um, but what I really love about sun butter is it's very low in oxalates. It's super, mm -hmm. and sunflower seeds, that's what it's from. Uh, and it's super high in magnesium and zinc and all these delicious things. So I love sun butter. Mm. Um, even a tablespoon of peanut butter, do not underestimate that. Um, that is delicious. Also mm. great protein source. The only one that I really, really avoid is almond butter. Oh yeah. Mm, it is right. just, it's an oxalate mm. bomb. It is. Mm. It's full of oxalates, which I specifically, we, we, we manage with PKD. So definitely mm -hmm. avoid that. Um, and I've even made some like a homemade Nutella that is keto mm -hmm. friendly. So that's got some hazelnuts in it. And you can find all kinds of nut butters. There's even watermelon seed butters. Um, and I do, you can do pecan. I did a really nice walnut pecan um, gingerbread butter over Christmas. So mm -hmm. you can get wild and crazy with butters. And I, I tend to stay away from the almond butter. And then if you are someone who needs to limit or manage oxalates, I tend to stay away from any of the cashew butters. Mm -hmm. Good, great. Sarah is asking, does Diana see international patients outside of the USA? Yes, I, I do work with international patients. And also, um, if anyone comes to me looking for help, or any of my fellow dietitians at Kidney Nutrition Institute, or anyone who works within the PKD world, you can find practitioners on Santa Barbara's website um, under practitioners, and we're not the right fit, we will absolutely help you try to find someone. Good, super. Captain Steve, um, I've been in oh, ketosis hi, three. Steve. <laughs> uh, has been in ketosis three years straight with no issues. Um, is it safe to stay in ketosis year round, or do you recommend occasional carb load days? Hmm. What's your philosophy? Yeah, so it's a kind of a that's kind of a double edge question. I do not subscribe to extremely strict ketogenic therapy meaning super low carbohydrates, you don't get the nutrition that you need. And um, so any media or Pinterest diet out there that's telling you have this much and then have a cheat day or a refi day or this day, chances are they're really, really too low in carbohydrate for you. So they're not nutritionally sound. Um, what I like to have is greater variety and so you're going to have higher net carbs and with that you don't need a refeed because you have such a good variety of food so not going for super high uh, ketone readings which you don't want to do because you want ketones present at a certain level because that means you're in ketosis but that doesn't mean that higher ketones are better um and so don't I don't subscribe to refeeds just because you don't have to do them when you're following a well-rounded ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. Uh, Heidi mm, is asking, well, thank you for the great insight and awareness. Uh, how can someone tell when they are at the best level of ketosis for them? So I guess the question is, you know, what BHEB right. blood level to shoot for? Yeah. And so if you guys see Heidi, she's a fellow dietitian, a really good kidney dietitian. So shout out to Heidi. Um, <laughs> so when you look online, you'll see nutritional ketosis, you'll see therapeutic ketosis. These numbers, these ranges for the level of your ketones when you're testing, they were really developed um, when ketogenic therapy basically evolved over a hundred years ago. And it was for epilepsy with children. You'll see online that nutritional ketosis is 1.5 to 3.0. So that's considered nutritional ketosis. And you don't- That's high, that's very it's, high. It's high. <laughs> and yeah. if you're mm -hmm. following a diet to reach that, especially if you've been doing it like Steve or someone else has been doing it for several years, you are ketone chasing and i can guarantee that your diet is not well-rounded when you're first starting ketogenic therapy you do want higher numbers 
I generally go for about one. I usually say one to three, but it really is one to two. So anywhere in that one to three range, and it'll be, you know, you'll have a range that is kind of all over the place, depending on whether you're, when you're testing, but you'll start to see patterns. And so that's in the very beginning phases. So I say maybe the first, you know, six to eight weeks, that is your higher goal because you're training your body. And after that, specifically with PKD and the kidneys, you just want low level ketosis. Mm -hmm. So you want, you are actually in ketosis if you're at 0.5 or higher. I so even argue if you're at like 0.3 or higher, <clears throat> um, you know, something good is already happening. But yes. um, mm -hmm. but I totally agree, you know, it, and it, it sort of happens naturally. Initially, you have pretty high ketone levels naturally. Mm, um, and sometimes, you know, some of them actually spill into the urine because your body hasn't figured out yet how to deal with them. And then later you reach a steady state lower plateau because your body cells are really efficient at metabolizing the ketones and just getting rid of them as soon as they're made. So yeah. people often get worried and say, whoa, my ketones are going down. I'm doing it wrong. But no, no, you're not doing it wrong. <laughs> your body is just wrong. So when you first start, your ketones are going to be high. Like you said, Thomas, your body's trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But when your body is efficient, it's supply and demand. And so if you keep trying to force it, it's not good for your body. And I call that carb cutting and ketone chasing. <laughs> you you mm -hmm. don't want to do that. And for long term, like, you know, for Steve or somebody who's doing keto long term, I generally say between 0.5 and 1.5 is a really good range for long term ketosis. Mm -hmm. And a couple times a year, you want to go a little bit tighter. So you kind of want to revisit that training and I call it a reboot. Um, but okay. if you start seeing those really high numbers and you've been following ketogenic therapy for a while, it's a good sign that you're malnourished. Hmm. Good. All right. David is asking what metabolic step of ketogenic diet slows the cyst cells? Um, are they unable to perform beta oxidation? So maybe I'll take the science C question. Um, so actually in my lab at UCSB, <clears throat> we're trying to answer that question. What exactly is going on uh, mechanistically there? And I don't have the answers yet. Um, you know, we'll hopefully get them and, you know, obviously publish the results and so on. Um, and there's a bunch of possibilities, you know, that we're looking into, you know, um, so a beta hydroxybutyrate, for example, is not only an energy molecule, but it's also a signaling molecule. There's a whole, there's a receptor for it. It's called GPR109A. Doesn't matter, um, you know, there's no test on it, but um, this receptor activation might play a role and we're testing that in the lab. But BHP does many other things. It's a strong anti-inflammatory uh, compound. Uh, it inhibits what's called the NLRP3 inflammasome. Um, that has impacts on you know, immune cells and inflammation in the kidney potentially. Um, it does many other things. It can actually modify what's called histones, um, which then in turn regulate, you know, change the, the gene expression that, that we talked about. So what exactly? The different steps are that are important or are most important or not at all important. Um, I couldn't tell you yet. Um, so there's still work to be done. Um, but it's a good thing to know that it is working um, as far as we can tell. Um, so, you know, one could say as a patient, you know, who cares why, <laughs> as long as it's working. Um, anyway, so maybe stay tuned. Um, sooner or later, we'll, we'll figure it out. Let's it see, really is so exciting right now mm -hmm. to be living through this because, I mean, in the kidney world, not just the PKD world, they're studying ketones, the one that Thomas mentioned, beta hydroxybutyrate. They're studying that, giving it to people who've had acute kidney injury to help them heal quicker and to help them um, not has, have as much damage because of that anti inflammatory. You know, with PKD, mm -hmm. looking at the anti inflammatory pieces of BHB to help with the fibrosis scarring in the kidneys. And it's just such an explosion of understanding of what is going on. And, and I agree, Thomas, it's, it's one of those things where that's why I love being a dietitian because it's like, okay, people are going to do ketogenic therapy because it is working. So let's help them do it safely. Mm -hmm.
Yeah. Good. Tracy is asking, <clears throat> have you seen positive results in people who have switched over to the keto diet? So there's sort of two answers to that. Number one, have we has Diana as a clinician, as a practitioner, seen anecdotally, uh, you know, one patient at a time um, that it's helping them? The other question is, um, in a larger scale, can we you know, demonstrate this in a controlled clinical study? Uh, maybe I, I guess give some glimpses there. Um, we have published a paper um, on the Renew program just to describe the program and to um, report on the sort of the qualitative outcomes in a group of about two dozen beta testers. So this was not a controlled clinical trial, and the paper is available. Um, and um, you can find it on my um, lab website at UCSB. Um, there is a study we've just completed, and that was really done by uh, Dr. Müller in Germany. Uh, looking at ketogenic diet in PKD, and uh, it's not published yet, but the results were um, presented at the last um, Big Kidney Conference in uh, November. That looked um, really amazing, so stay tuned for the paper. Um, we are planning <clears throat> um, actual clinical trials, you know, prospective uh, clinical trials with long-term follow-up. They should start this year uh, in the spring and um, summer. So. Uh, all I can say is stay tuned for these kind of controlled studies. But Diana can probably say something about her clinical experience, you know, one on one with actual patients working with them. So, what Absolutely. has been the outcome? So, you know, and, and what the success is or what the outcomes are, it's not just labs, it's not just those specifics. What I have seen is an improvement in pain, specifically with PKD. Um, better managed blood pressure because that is one of the benefits like your blood pressure goes down um, i've also seen um, people who intentionally wanted to and needed to lose weight get that um, looking at the numbers i have definitely seen um, i had one person just reach out to me that said kidney stones that were visible on their mri are now gone a year later um, and we've also had, if we want to talk science, we've had people who had an MRI with PKD when they started, and then also one year out and a year and a half out and saw absolutely no change in the size of their kidneys, which is huge. Uh, definitely, if we're talking about labs, we've seen great improvements in GFR. We took the stress off the kidneys. Um, if we are talking about uric acid or gout, we've seen improvements there. All the inflammatory markers, we've seen improvements too. Also, um, heart health, all the cholesterols. And, and I, I can't believe this hasn't come up yet, but saw improvement in their lipid panels. And so every single, each person's individual and, and the improvements that we have seen are just so positive. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and not only that, but like success in actually following the ketogenic therapy, because it's not easy, especially if, if you don't have help, but um, lot, those are all mm -hmm. anecdotal, but so many improvements, better sleep. Okay. Um, Good. And the great thing is like from the doctors, some of the doctors are like, I don't know, I don't want to know what you're doing, but keep doing it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So this looks great. And so people okay. feel good. So lots good. of success. Let's try to zoom through very quickly through a bunch of questions. You know, like I like okay. very quick, quick answers right, before we run out of time. Nicole is asking a couple of go-to meal suggestions. You know, something, I guess, you grab on the go. Maybe that's a question. Um, go-to meals. Um, super easy in the morning. Eggs are very keto-friendly. Throw in some avocado. Cook them in a little olive oil have a little bit of sugar-free Greek yogurt. Um, I love the Greek gods, plain traditional. It is my ultimate favorite. Throw on a little bit of blueberries, maybe a pinch of cinnamon and some walnuts. So that's a super easy breakfast. Smoothies are fantastic. Use whole canned, um, whole fat coconut milk. You can throw in mm -hmm. some, you know, some fruit, some you know, some other things there, a scoop of nut butter, uh, super easy for lunches, of course, is a nice big salad, put on some of your favorite proteins, add a really nice uh, salad dressing, some nuts, 
um, lots of veggies. That's a great option. Uh, super oh, easy. To generate. You're giving away the whole new program. <laughs> <laughs> I like to eat. I like the food. So, and I always want people yeah. to enjoy their food. Um, dinner, Perfect. you can do Thomas's stir fry. Um, <laughs> you also even a really mm -hmm. nice size piece of salmon with some broccoli on the side, maybe some mm -hmm. pesto. Uh, there's so many good recipes. So mm -hmm. go to, I've got some sample recipes. Um, you can look me up. I'm the PKD dietitian, Kidney Nutrition Institute. If you look up the renew part of it, you can download like four days of recipes. Uh, there's lots of really good recipes. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that we can get some links out to you guys so you can look at it. Okay. How about challenge for you? <clears throat> Can you answer it in one sentence? Um, Amber is okay. asking, when is when is the next re renew session? February. It's an open enrollment. It's an open enrollment, so I think the next session starts in February. There's one going on now. I think they well, have February their first. Right. Oh, that's two sentences. I mean, so it is. I think it's <laughs> February or March soon. Right, right. I think there's one in now that started in February and another one in March, if I'm remembering it right. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, we don't have the exact answer already. Uh, Nicole is asking, um, bread labeled at keto from stores like Costco, yay or nay? If it has almond flour, don't do it. There mm -hmm. are some with less ingredients that are okay every once in a while. Absolutely. Some of them. Okay. Um, I like royal bread. Uh, you can do carbonate. Um, there's okay. definitely some that can work. Good. Uh, Retropet is asking, living in Montana, it is difficult to find uh, some of the recommended foods. Do you have suggestions for grocery shopping for those of us in rural areas? Do um, not. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I think you even if you go to a dollar store, you can find, um, you know, a, a decent dollar store. You can find... And that's the most challenging thing. <laughs> you can find something. Um, it's important to, to learn how to read food labels, um, you know, uh, read what the ingredients are. It doesn't have to be organic all the time, um, at least in my opinion. So <clears throat> I think no matter whether it's rural or not, you can find something. But what's your take, Diana? Well, <clears throat> you can freeze a lot of stuff. You can buy frozen sure. avocados. Uh, you can order a 24 pack of eight ounce, really good coconut milk off of Amazon. And so buy your essentials. Thrive Market is really good for finding products. Um, they do have a little subscription free fee, but buy in bulk and frozen vegetables count. Um, you know, frozen salmon counts. You can order your nuts, you can order your seeds. Um, so absolutely, um, mm -hmm. I would say buy in bulk. Good, okay. There's also online stores, you know, there's some really good ones where you just order it and it comes in the mail. All right, uh, Amber says, will this help lower blood pressure? I think you already mentioned the answer is yes. Right. Yes, it can. And what I also want to mention here is that mm -hmm. You absolutely, if you are on medication that is to either lower your blood pressure or if you're on diabetic medication like metformin or insulin or anything, please talk to your doctor before you start a ketogenic therapy because a lot of times you'll need adjustments in these medications because your blood sugar can go down and also your blood pressure can go down. And those are good right. things, but mm. you might need adjustments. We don't want them to go too low. Right. Yes, and that's called deep prescribing. And I think most people that go for the Renew program that can actually get deep prescribed on their blood pressure medication. Um, and that makes it important to monitor and have a blood pressure cuff. Everyone should have one um, and just monitor, you know, is it getting lower and lower and lower and you can, you know, get rid of some of the medication. All right, let's see what else we got. Um, Stu Kaplan says, just wanted to say hi. Hi, Stu. Hi, Stu. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, what else we have? Uh, Retropet says, I participated in Renew in, uh, last year and would highly recommend it. Thank you, Retropet. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the power to pick questions. So um, are there any others? There's probably some more here. Um, Retropet also said, my blood pressure dropped, weight loss and cholesterol has improved greatly. EGFR improved as well. 
Thank you, Retropet. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. All so good. good. Retropet, again, uh, ideas uh, on how to help my doctor get on board with a keto uh, diet. Great question. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> Tricky question. Um, maybe just let, let me say one thing. Um, unfortunately, <clears throat> you know, I'm a college professor. I teach um, and I, I teach grad students, but also undergrads, lots and lots of undergrads, including lots and lots of pre-med students. So those are students that will go to medical school. We have zero nutrition classes, um, and neither do any of the other colleges. Um, so doctors go into medical school knowing essentially nothing about nutrition. Once they're in medical school, there are usually zero nutrition classes in medical school, so then keep learning nothing. What they do learn is one thing. What they do learn is um, that um, ketoacidosis is dangerous. Um, and you know that's an emergency situation that um, applies to usually to type one diabetics and that you know that lands people in the ER and it um, can kill them. So unfortunately doctors get confused often and um, think that ketoacidosis is the same as ketosis and they sound very similar. They have nothing, they really actually are opposites. So it's a little unfortunate um, that keto mm, um, is misunderstood oftentimes and even doctors don't get it quite right and they're thinking it's dangerous, but it isn't. So I'm not quite sure what to do about it other than talk about it all the time um, and try to educate doctors. But what's your take, Diana? What, what can a patient do that wants to do a keto metabolic therapy and the doctor says, no, you're going to kill yourself? I think that ketogenic therapy is is misunderstood by healthcare professionals. A lot of them think it's the meat o keto. So here's what I here's what I do with folks. You can tell your doctor, like, I'm going to try this. I am working with a professional. And if you're working with a dietitian, even better. Um, you can say they are helping me. And here are my goals. And a lot of the doctors will be a lot of the doctors that um, people that I've worked with have approached it like that. They're like, well, I can't really agree with it, but I can help you monitor it, monitor what you're doing. So they'll get your labs. They'll get your labs at baseline. You know, they'll look at your lipids, your cholesterols. They'll get them the next visit. They'll check in with you. You know, you can have that conversation ahead of time. I'm on these blood pressure medications. I'm going to be monitoring my blood pressure because there's a chance it might go down. Good thing. Um, can I reach out to you for adjustments? Or so I have found that even if they don't buy into ketogenic therapy, if they know that you're being followed by a professional, working with a professional and have very good reasons why you are trying it, then they will work with you. And some of the most powerful testimonials are when you come back and you've cut your blood pressure, you're at that healthy weight, your lipids look fantastic, you know, so your outcomes, it, they are the powerful thing that will show um, what can be done. So that's how I like to approach it. I've had people switch doctors because they're not supportive. Right. You know, yeah. It, it, it is mean, tough. I talk to yeah. some doctors, you know. Hmm. Right. At least, you know, in the US, it's a little easier to switch doctors. You know, and I know in some countries, you know, if you're in the UK, for example, you're pretty much stuck with whatever doctor is in your district there. Yeah. So that can be tricky. Um, <clears throat> so, um, well, anyway. Try your best. Uh, and, you know, of course, diets are diets and you know, diets are um, they're not prescription drugs or anything like that. What anyone has to everyone has to eat. <laughs> you can eat whatever you want. Or there's no police that comes into your house and says, no, you can't. <laughs> We're going to arrest you because you eat a ketogenic diet. All right. Um, good. Well, it's the um, top of the hour here. Um, we let's see um just real quick retro pet says my blood pressure dropped weight loss um and cholesterol has improved greatly egfr improved as well mm -hmm. thank you retro pet captain steve says key to help my blood pressure i'm off all meds now cured my gert too okay gert um has been addressed great um 
I would say um, I have a request. Um, anyone watching this either live or later on the recording, please put into the comments <clears throat> any topics you would like, um, you know, future live um, streams to be about. Right. So, what do you want to want people uh, to talk about uh, on about PKD and nutrition and diets and so on, or research or whatever it is? Um, so, come up with some suggestions. Put them all in the comments. And um, we'll try to put a list together of kind of like, you know, things that are requested. That would be amazing. Um, oh, okay. One last question here. Nicola um, says, my nephrologist um, didn't believe or understand the keto at all. I made her Google keto citra and I'm now their test case. Oh, I hope to prove the clinic that, uh, to the clinic that it works. So, well, that's amazing, Nicole. Um, Here's a guinea pig for that uh, nephrologist. So <laughs> fingers crossed, <laughs> you have a good experience there and can report back um, to your doctor. Um, and I think that's pretty much what it might take um, in the long, long run, sort of like a, a grassroots effort. Um, there's a lot of patient driven um, um, kind of like progress going on right now. Um, so our whole you know, the, the company Keto Citra um, actually has over 10 people with PKD on the team. Um, so it's like really literally the company is run by people with PKD. I'm one of the few that doesn't have PKD, but I'm a PKD researcher. So maybe that counts a little bit. Um, good. Excellent. Um, I would say let's um, thank everyone and especially Diana for spending an hour and, you know, explaining um, what uh, her experience has been. Thanks, Diana. Um, we'll try to do more regular live events, um, you know, with Diana, but maybe with other folks as well. Um, and uh, so please put down uh, suggestions, what you want um, to hear. All right. Excellent. Well, have a great evening, great night, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. um, Bye, everybody. We'll see you all later. Thanks. Bye.